Hey everybody, Todd Michael Putnam from Creative Adventure Tables bringing you another adventure table idea. And this is the Legend of Geral's Horde. The Legend of Geral's Horde. So uh, like I've been saying, uh, my, my group switched over. We're playing Shadow Dark. In the last session, uh, when they were carousing, they got some rumors. And uh, one of the rumors was that uh, they um, there was a treasure map to Geral's Horde, a, a very famous... Um, uh, uh, noble who would uh, was like a, a warlord or whatever, and he had amassed a great uh, wealth over his lifetime. And uh, they eventually managed to get this treasure map f uh, for where uh, where he kept all of his stuff. And it led to an abandoned castle, or what appears to be an abandoned castle, uh, far off in a remote location uh, next to what is now just a totally desolate uh, small town. Uh, and, and that was like well over a hundred years ago when, uh, when any of this appeared to have been inhabited. And uh, the players were going to follow the treasure map, which says that the, uh, the treasure for Jarl's Horde is kept in this abandoned castle. And as far as why the castle was abandoned and how come the, uh, the town is all gone, uh, there were basically rumors that there was a, uh, a plague that started and swept through the town, uh, killing uh, one by one and then eventually in larger and larger numbers all of the, uh, all of the peasants and stuff in the town. And uh, the castle itself basically shut itself up supposedly to keep the, uh, the uh, plague fr and, uh, from getting into them. Uh, but sure enough, eventually the plague did manage to work its way into the castle and uh, the legend has it that eventually everyone was wiped out. And of course, just the fact that uh, the, the plague was in there, no one has ever gone into the, the, the castle again. And, um, and, and so it has just been uh, left basically abandoned to history. And yet this is where the treasure map says that Geral's Hoard is. So the story itself, as far as uh, what was going to happen, the encounters, uh, this little section right here will, uh, will work for basically their travel section. And uh, while they're traveling, they are going to be attacked by uh, a, a group of dire wolves uh, that will surround them and, and go after them and fight. Not necessarily to the death, uh, but if they can uh, drag off a victim or two, they certainly will. Uh, but it's quite possible that the players uh, would be able to chase them off um, if, the, uh, if the dire wolves uh, lose their morale. So um, that'll be one small encounter, so nothing too serious, but they should be able to handle it. Uh, eventually, they will come to the bridge itself uh, in front of the castle. And uh, that bridge, uh, of course, has fallen into great disrepair. They can see that uh, part of it has been barricaded off uh, a long time ago uh, when apparently the, the um, inhabitants were trying to keep peasants and anybody else uh, from going into the castle for, for refuge against the plague, but um, to no avail in the long run. And the bridge itself is, of course, is broken, and uh, there's a, a, a moat or a river going around it, and so um, that's a, a natural barrier for getting in, and the players are going to have to go across. As they start to cross, uh, the curse of the castle begins coming to life, and these gargoyles uh, that are uh, all around in the, uh, in, in the courtyard and on the outer walls of the castle itself are going to spring to life to defend the castle against any potential invaders. And so when the players uh, attempt to come across the bridge, that is when the gargoyles come to life and they will attempt to accost the players uh, and, uh, and stop them from entering the castle. And of course, gargoyles, not being true living creatures, they do not have a morale check and they will fight to the death. Um, and that will let the players know they're probably in some kind of the right place because uh, if there's magic this strong that's defending, it's got to be defending something. And so that's going to be a hint that quite possibly uh, they are indeed in the right place. Uh, once they get inside, there's a couple of things to note that's going to come into the courtyard. Um, they're going to see that there's a small chapel that's over here uh, and the, the gates that are closed and locked. Uh, there's also going to be a pit filled with bodies and there's going to be a, a small makeshift graveyard uh, that's in here that's not normal inside the courtyard. And it appears to be that um, when the, the plague started getting inside the castle itself and the, the various barons and lords and, and you know, uh, upper level you know, knights and stuff like that that were getting it, at first they tried burying them and stuff, but very quickly the castle became... Uh, overrun by this plague and they weren't able to make enough graves anymore and it resulted in them just literally digging a pit and throwing the bodies in there 
uh, all those years ago. So that's the first thing they're going to see. They're also going to hear some sounds uh, off over by the stables. And uh, if they go to explore, they're going to find that uh, the horses in the stable have actually been turned into undead. And uh, they're not necessarily going to have to fight them unless they actually attack the horses. But mostly if they, you know, cut the horses free or whatever it is, they will attempt to roam out uh, and literally just escape the area if they can. Uh, but clearly that's a, a sign that uh, something has gone terribly wrong. Uh, in, the, in the graveyard itself, there's going to be a big bag of coins that has been thrown in there. And just as uh, it's, it's known that, of course, uh, you put a pair of coins on the eyelids of uh, anyone who has died so they can pay the ferryman to go to the other side of the River of Styx uh, and pay, you know, pay Charon. But uh, in cases of plague where they don't want to touch the bodies and etc., so on and so forth, and usually uh, it's, it's, an, it's a known thing that you would just throw a large bag of coins into the graveyard itself. Uh, and that hopefully the spirits of the deceased will be able to grab those coins and, uh, and uh, use them to pay their way. And so that, uh, that large sack of coins is there. If they go in and touch the large coins, that is when these spirits will actually, ghosts, will come to life uh, and will go and attack the players um, uh, for disturbing their rest. And if they explore the chapel, uh, which is over here, they're going to find the doors that are locked from the inside, so they're going to have to break their way into it. Once they break their way into it, they're only going to find a couple of bodies that are there. Um, and it's going to look like they died not from disease, but basically from like starvation or thirst. That was a long time ago. But um, it's not, you're, you're, there's not going to be signs of plague or anything like that inside of the chapel itself. Uh, and there's going to be notes that are scrawled uh, in the in the little um, Abby's stand, if you will, uh, basically of a journal talking about how the plague has finally made its way. You know, first the the plague was only outside in the uh, in, in the towns and whatnot, uh, and more and more people got sick. People would go to sleep at night, and then they would wake up infected by the plague, and within hours or, or you know or days they would die. Uh, and it was sweeping faster and faster. Eventually, the castle originally was sending help out, supposedly, to help these people for what minister what they could do, but it really didn't have any effect. Uh, and eventually, the castle itself closed itself off in order to protect the plague from, from reaching them, but it didn't work. And eventually, even inside the, the, the castle itself, people were being infected uh, and people were turning on each other. And these, these last two individuals sought refuge here inside of the abbey, uh, and said that this was the last safe place. Uh, and there are a couple of torches there. They're not um, the sconces there, uh, torches in sconces, but they're not lit, uh, but they could be lit, um, which uh, is an, can be an important factor in Shadow Dark, where in darkness, none of the players have dark vision, unlike 5th uh, edition or Pathfinder, stuff like that. It doesn't matter if you're an elf, a dwarf, you don't have dark vision, so if it's dark, um, you're going to be at disadvantage, and all the monsters are dark adapted, so they're going to be at advantage. Uh, and so uh, in this particular area, if they need torches or whatever, there are torches that they could light uh, to defend themselves or keep the darkness at bay inside of this uh, ancient abandoned uh, abbey or chapel. Uh, and then furthermore, if you continue on, of course, eventually they're going to be they're going to see that the um, that uh, they're going to have to explore the, uh, the the castle itself. Uh, there's going to be way into the castle proper. Uh, as opposed to just the outside grounds and, and or should I say inside courtyard. Uh, in here, there's going to be some large rats and whatnot. This is going to be basically a small kitchen and, and stuff. Uh, not really anything of, of really value. Uh, they go into the this main chamber in here, though, and there's going to be bones and bones everywhere. Just piles of bones with rats and stuff skittering around. Uh, and if they spend any time in here looking around, they're going to be met by an apparition. This guy here is going to appear from out of the bones uh, and is basically going to warn them that the entire castle itself is cursed um, and that, um, that uh, to flee while they can uh, because there is no refuge and there is no safety within this castle and to, and to leave before their souls and lives are taken. Uh, and then it will just dissipate. It doesn't attack. It doesn't uh, do anything like that. But it basically is a very chilling warning that... Uh, that there is nothing to be found uh, in this castle but death. There is no safety and there's no glory to be found here. Uh, if the, ca uh, the characters uh, persist, as I expect that they will, and they go through these large uh, doors, 
and it goes up a level. As you can see, the stairs going up a level there. Uh, it'll come into basically a, like a scribe's room or an abbey's room, uh, but all of those appear to be dead. All of the, uh, the faithful appear to be gone, and all that's here now is basically a white uh, in armor, of course, with his weapon, and uh, he is going to challenge the players and, uh, and attack them on sight uh, to try and uh, defend the castle. And if the players make it past them, the next thing is going to be these two rooms here that are filled with vampire spawns. And these are spawns. The, uh, the castle itself, the plague, as it turns out, wasn't a real plague, of course. Uh, it was uh, the, the, the noble of the castle had been turned into a vampire, and so he was feeding and uh, killing off the populace. Uh, and then eventually, his numbers got less and less, he, um, he turned some of his own uh, knights and, uh, and uh, royal guardsmen into vampire spawns uh, to continue to serve him in the afterlife. And so they are, in fact, still loyal. And while their beds are there, they remain unused. However, there are coffins littered all about uh, on the inside of the secondary room uh, where they rest during the daytime and then take up their guard duties uh, in, in the after hours. And lastly, of course, uh, is going to be where Jeral's horde is actually kept. This is going to be the master vampire. Uh, he's got a fountain of blood that's going on in there. Um, he's got his, uh, his own coffin, sarcophagus thing up against the wall, the piles of gold surrounding it. Uh, and his mate, who has also been turned into a vampire spawn, is there. Uh, and this is where the epic battle takes place. Uh, on the highest tiers of uh, the inside of the castle itself. Uh, and if they are able to defeat him, then of course they will uh, earn Jeral's Horde and uh, they will gain the experience to go up to the next level and uh, probably some good magic items to boot. So that is, uh, that is the legend of Jeral's Horde uh, as far as building it is concerned. So um, this right here, this uh, water mat, and uh, not mat, um, these uh, water... Uh, terrain tiles are from Monster Fight Club, as are these right here. These are forest transition tiles, and I just mount them back to back. Normally they go up against a larger, you know, forest terrain set, but I just mount them back to back, and it provides a nice, it provides a nice uh, bank for the river that explains why the river isn't, you know, flowing everywhere, so to speak. It, it, hold, it holds the river in place, uh, and also um, it stops it from being a straight edge because, of course, these are, these are, if I pull this off, they're, they're magnetized. It's going to be a straight edge on that, which kind of takes away a little bit of the fantasy. So um, this, uh, this serves a, a good um, uh, double purpose of uh, making it look more natural and, um, and uh, providing a little bit of um, uh, variation in the edges of the river itself. Uh, the the um, bridge is also from Dwarven Forge. And I can't remember which set, there's so many of them, but I'm sure you can go on their website and just look for uh, Bridge, uh, and uh, that'll be there. The castle outside itself, these big walls, this big entrance piece right here, um, I've been thinking it was Zitterdes all this time. It is not, uh, which I guess is a good thing because I think Zitterdes is out of business. So uh, Blue Moon Miniature Buildings, I think is what it was called. I got it on uh, eBay, uh, and it's hard foam. Um, and it comes uh, like a lighter, sh a little bit lighter shade. I had uh, a previous set that was, re that was painted just a little bit darker than this. You can see the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right. The one on the left hasn't been painted. Um, but it, basically, it's a, it's a castle system that you can assemble. These top pieces come off, um, and uh, you can arrange it in whichever order that you want. And so that's, that's what provides the castle walls and um, towers. And then on the inside is mostly Dwarven Forge. All of this in here, all of the stairs, all the castle walls and stuff like that on the inside, that's all Dwarven Forge, just their standard dungeon uh, tiles. Uh, obviously not including like these here are WizKids uh, bunk beds from their castles uh, accessory set. But um, the, the tile set itself is all Dwarven Forge. The tile set all in here for the Abbey is all Dwarven Forge, uh, except um, there in the Abbey, and in the main chambers, it's not just their classic tile set, uh, it's from their Dungeons of Doom. You can see these little red pillars that mark them separate from just the regular walls. 
This is, this is one of the regular walls here of dungeons, and then this is from the Dungeons of Doom. I can't remember what the exact set is, because uh, there's like 12 different sets in there, but from Dungeons of Doom, these uh, red pillared walls. I have them intermixed between one another. That's all Dwarven Forge. And then last but not least, uh, oh, the Battle Man, I want to say is from Deep Cut Studios. I'm not a thousand percent sure of that, but uh, I get a lot of mats, my mats from them, so it's probably from that. Um, these uh, these hay piles and stuff, those are from the Wiz Kids farm set. I think there's two different farm sets. I think this, uh, this little wagon piece is also from the farm set. Uh, and then this right here is actually built from uh, Wiz Kids. Their, um, their dungeon set. I actually just kind of assembled it basically in order to create a set of stables. And then I used a Monster Fight Club, uh, um, their cobblestone, uh, uh, cobblestone set for, uh, for pathways and whatnot uh, to put down underneath it. And, and basically uh, that, uh, that provided a, a set of stables there for it. Uh, this is a 3D print piece here. I, it could be printable scenery, but I honestly, I can't remember. I get it from too many different sources, so I don't really remember off the top of my head. Uh, and then uh, these are mostly, I think, 3D printed or off of uh, eBay. I don't actually remember what the source. S they could be WizKids. I, I, I honestly, I don't remember. That's too many sources for too many things, so... Uh, but that's basically it. Uh, that's what put it all together. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And uh, appreciate you, uh, Let me know uh, what you think in the comments below. And I will catch you guys next adventure. Take care. Bye.